welcome dear students standard 7 subject mathematics topic direct and inverse proportion first topic is direct proportion we can see four circles where the first circle is divided in two parts second circle is divided into four parts third circle is divided into six parts and the fourth circle is divided into eight parts let the first circle be a second is b third circle is c and the fourth circle be d in figure a one diameter makes two parts of the circle in figure b two diameters make four parts of the circle in figure c three diameters make six parts of the circle in figure d four diameters make eight parts of the circle number of diameters upon number of divisions is equal to 1 upon 2 is equal to 2 upon 4 is equal to 3 upon 6 is equal to 4 upon 8 here the ratio of the number of diameters to the number of divisions remain constant in the examples above we see that when the number of diameters increases the number of divisions also increases the number of diameters and the number of divisions are in direct proportion let us see some examples or a practice set based on the direct proportion practice set 37 first question if 7 kg onions cost 140 rupees how much must we pay for 12 kg onions solution let the cost of 12 kg onions is x rupees the number of onions and their cost vary in direct proportion So seven upon one forty is equal to twelve upon x. Therefore, x is equal to twelve into one forty upon seven, which is equal to two forty rupees. If you multiply twelve with one forty and then we divide it with seven, we get answer as two forty rupees. So the value of x is two forty rupees. Hence, the cost of twelve kg onions is two forty rupees. Second question: If 600 rupees buy 15 bunches of feed, how many will 1,280 rupees buy? Let x bunches of feed can be bought in 1,280 rupees. The number of bunches of feed and their cost vary in direct proportion. 15 upon 600 is equal to x upon 1,280. Therefore, x is equal to 1,280 multiplied by 15 upon 600. Therefore, x is equal to 32. Hence, 32 bunches of feed can be bought in 1,280 rupees. Third question: For nine cows, 13 kg 500 grams of food supplements are required every day. In the same proportion. how much will be needed for 12 cows solution let us suppose x kg of food supplement required for 12 cows the quantity of food supplement and the number of cows vary in direct proportion so 9 upon 13.5 is equal to 12 upon x 13.5 is nothing but 13 kg 500 grams which we have converted grams also in kg so we get 13.5 so therefore we have 9 upon 13.5 is equal to 12 upon x therefore x is equal to 12 into 13.5 upon 9 therefore x is equal to 18 kg hence 18 kg of food supplement is required for 12 cows The cost of 12 quintals of soya bean is 36000 rupees. How much will 8 quintals cost? 
solution let us suppose the cost of 8 quintals of soya bean is x rupees the number of soya beans and their cost vary in direct proportion so 12 upon 36000 is equal to 8 upon x therefore x is equal to 8 into 36000 upon 12 therefore when we multiply 8 with 36 and divide it with 12 we get answer as 24000 rupees so the value of x is 24000 rupees hence the cost of 8 quintals of soya bean is 24000 rupees two mobiles cost 16000 rupees how much money will be required to buy 13 such mobiles solution let us suppose the cost of 13 mobiles is x rupees the number of mobiles and their cost vary in direct proportion so 2 upon 16000 is equal to 13 upon x therefore x is equal to 16000 into 13 upon 2 So therefore the value of x is 1 lakh 4000 rupees hence the cost of 13 mobiles is 1 lakh 4000 rupees inverse proportion some volunteers have gathered to dig 90 pits for a tree plantation program one volunteer digs one pit in one day if there are 15 volunteers they will take 9 upon 15 that is equal to 6 days to dig the pits 10 volunteers will take 9 upon 10 that is 9 days to dig the pits are the number of pits and number of volunteers in direct proportion if the number of volunteers decreases more days are required and if the number of volunteers increases fewer days are required for the job however the product of the number of days and number of volunteers remain constant we say that these numbers are in inverse proportion let us see the sums from practice set 38 first question five workers take 12 days to build a field how many days would six workers take how many would 15 take solution as the number of workers increases the number of days decreases so the number of workers and number of days are in inverse proportion let us suppose six workers take x days to build a field so 5 into 12 is equal to 6 into x therefore x is equal to 60 upon 6 5 into 12 is 60 so we get 60 upon 6 So therefore, 60 divided by 6 is nothing but 10. So the value of x is 10. Hence, six workers take 10 days to build a field. Now let us suppose 15 workers will take y days to build a field. 5 into 12 is equal to 15 into y. 5 into 12 again is 60. So we get y is equal to 60 upon 15. So therefore, y is equal to four days. Sixty upon fifteen is four. Hence, fifteen workers will take four days to build a field. Hence, six workers will take ten days, while fifteen workers will take four days to build a field. Second sum. Mohan Rao took ten days to finish a book, reading forty pages every day. How many pages must he read in a day to finish it in eight days? solution let us suppose mohan rao will have to read x pages every day to finish a book in 8 days as the number of days decrease the number of pages increases so the number of days and number of pages are in inverse proportion 10 into 40 is equal to 8 into x x is equal to 40 into 10 is 400 divided by 8 when we divide 400 by 8 we get answer as 50 so x is equal to 50 pages hence mohan rao will have to read 50 pages every day to finish the book in 8 days third sum mary cycles at 6 km per hour how long will she take to reach her aunt's house which is 12 km away 
if she cycles at a speed of 4 km per hour how long would she take solution case 1 speed is 6 km per hour distance is 12 km so first we are going to see in case 1 that mary cycles at 6 km per hour how much time will she take to reach her aunt's house which is 12 km away this we are going to see in the case 1 whereas in case 2 we are going to see if she cycles at a speed of 4 km per hour how long would she take so let us see case 1 first where speed is given as 6 km per hour and distance is given as 12 km we know the formula time is equal to distance upon speed so distance is 12 speed is 6 so we have 12 divided by 6 which is nothing but 2 hours so time taken by mary to reach her aunt's house which is 12 kilometers away is 2 hours case 2 if the speed of the mary is 4 km per hour distance will obviously remain same which is 12 kilometers because she will take that much only distance to reach her aunt's house since her aunt is far away from her spot at 12 kilometers time is equal to distance upon speed again distance is 12 whereas your speed is 4 so 12 upon 4 is 3 hours hence if the speed of the cycle is 6 km per hour then mary will take 2 hours and if the speed of the cycle is 4 km per hour then she will take 3 hours to reach her aunt's house fourth sum the stock of grain in a government warehouse lasts 30 days for 4000 people how many days will it last for 6000 people solution let us suppose the stock of grain in government warehouse lasts x days for 6000 people as the number of people increases the number of days decreases so the number of days and number of people are in inverse proportion 30 into 4000 is equal to 6000 into x so therefore x is equal to when we multiply 30 with 4000 we get 1000 120000 and then we divide it by 6000 so the value of x will become 20 which is 20 days hence the stock of grain in government warehouse lasts for 20 days for 6000 people as the value of x we get is 20 days next topic is partnership when starting a business enterprise money is required for an office raw materials etc this amount is called the capital often two or more people put in money for the capital in other words this people start a business by investing in the partnership in a business partnership all partners have joint account in a bank the profit made or the loss incurred is shared by the partners in proportion to the money each one has invested practice set 39 first question suresh and ramesh together invested 144000 rupees in the ratio 4 is to 5 and bought a plot of land after some years they sold it at a profit of 20% what is the profit each of them got solution the proportion of suresh's and ramesh's investment is 4 is to 5 the profit is shared in the same proportion as the investment hence the proportion of profit is 4 is to 5 now profit is 20 upon 100 into 144000 ,000. so if you calculate it we get answer as 20 8800 rupees this is nothing but the profit therefore the profit of suresh and ramesh is given by suresh's profit that is 4 upon 9 9 is nothing but 4 is to 5 ratio we add 4 plus 5 that is 9 so suresh's profit is equal to 4 upon 9 into 28800 which is equal to 12800 rupees if you calculate it 
Ramesh's profit is equal to 5 upon 9 into 28,800 which is equal to 16,000 rupees. Hence, Suresh and Ramesh got a profit of 12,800 and 16,000 rupees respectively. Second sum, Virat and Samrat together invested 50,000 and 120,000 rupees to start a business. They suffered a loss of 20%. How much loss did each of them incur? Solution. The proportion of Virat's and Samrat's investment is given by 50,000 is to 1,20,000 that is 5 is to 12. The loss is shared in the same proportion as the investment. Hence the proportion of profit is 5 is to 12. Now loss is equal to 20 upon 100 into 50,000 plus 1,20,000 which is equal to 20 upon 100 into 1,70,000. If we calculate it, we get answer as 34,000 rupees. This is nothing but the loss. Therefore, the loss incurred by Virat and Samrat is given by Virat's loss is equal to 5 upon 17 into 34,000 which is equal to 10,000 rupees. Samrat's loss is equal to 12 upon 17 into 34,000 which is equal to 24,000 rupees. Hence, Virat and Samrat incurred the loss of 10,000 and 24,000 rupees respectively. Third sum, Shweta, Piyush and Nachiket together invested 80,000 rupees and started a business of selling sheets and towels from Sulapur. Shweta's share of capital was 30,000 rupees and Piyush's 12,000. At the end of the year, they had made a profit of 24%. What was Nachiket's investment and what was his share of the profit? Solution. Nachiket's investment is equal to total investment minus Shweta's investment plus Piyush's investment. So total investment was 80,000 minus Shweta's investment is given as 30,000 plus Piyush's investment is given as 12,000 which is equal to 80,000 minus 42,000, which is equal to 38,000 rupees. This is nothing but Nachiket's investment. The proportion of Shweta's, Piyush's and Nachiket's investment is given by 30,000 is to 12,000 is to 38,000, which is equal to 15 is to 6 is to 9. This is the ratio or the proportion of Shweta's, Piyush's and Nachiket's investment. The profit is shared in the same proportion as the investment. Hence, the proportion of profit is 15 is to 6 is to 19. Now, profit is equal to 24 upon 100 into 80,000, which is equal to 19,200 rupees. Therefore, Nachiket's share profit is given by 19 upon 40 into 19,200 when we solve this, we get 9,120 rupees. Hence, Nachiket's investment and his share of, of the profit are 38,000 and 9,120 rupees respectively. Fourth sum, A and B shared a profit of 24,500 rupees in the proportion 3 is to 7. Each of them gave 2% of his share of the profit to the soldiers welfare fund what was the actual amount given to the fund by each of them solution amount of share to the soldiers welfare fund is equal to 2% of 24500 which is equal to 490 rupees the profit is shared in the proportion of 3 is to 7 therefore a's share of the fund is given by 3 upon 10 into 490 which is equal to 147 rupees and B's share of fund is given by 7 upon 10 into 490 which is equal to 343 rupees. Hence A's and B's share to the fund are 147 and 343 rupees respectively. The last sum of this exercise and chapter. Fifth sum. Jaya, Sima, Nikhil and Nilesh put in altogether 
3,60,000 rupees to form a partnership with the investments being in the proportion 3 is to 4 is to 7 is to 6. What was Jaya's actual share in the capital? They made a profit of 12%. How much profit did Nikhil make? Solution. Total investment is equal to 3,60,000 rupees. Total profit is equal to 12 upon 100 into 3,60,000 which is equal to 43,200 rupees. This is the total profit. The profit is shared in the same proportion as the investment. Hence, the proportion of profit is 3 is to 4 is to 7 is to 6. Jaya's share is given by 3 upon 20 is equal to 3 upon 20 into 36, 3,60,000. Now, this 20 came from adding 3 plus 4 plus 7 plus 6. So we get 20. So 3 upon 20 into 3,60,000 is nothing but 54,000 rupees. This is nothing but Jaya's share. Nikhil's share in the profit is given by 7 upon 20 into 43,200 which is equal to 15,120 rupees. Hence, Jaya's share and Nikhil's profit are 54,000 and 15,120 rupees respectively. I hope you all liked the video and understood the chapter. Thank you for watching this video.